Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Now if this is your first time here, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dave Vaughn and I am super excited that you found your way here. You read the title so you already know this video is going to be about me finally watching Big Brother season 18. Oh my gosh, three years later and I am finally watching it. Now if you know me, you know I don't like to see myself on TV, which is why I have not watched these seasons up until now. Like, I didn't want to see it. I wouldn't watch the challenge <laughs> if I wasn't required to live tweet, but because I have to live tweet with you guys and I have to watch it. But other than that, I wouldn't watch that either. But I have finally, three years later, decided to give it a try. And from what I have seen from this first episode, I am in for a journey. Like the ride is going to be intense, <laughs> but I'm going to put on my seatbelt. <laughs> and I'm going to take it. So if this video is something that you are interested in, continue watching. As always, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of this crazy ride, but um, in the meantime, in between time, let's go ahead and get on into this video. Damn, baby girl, yeah, you look fly, yeah, you look fly, yeah, you look fly, you got it going on, can't even lie, and a booty crazy, oh my god, then yeah, why you gonna do it like that, put that ass all on me, don't even know what to do with all that, no, no, no lie, no cap, hey baby girl, yeah, you looking fly. Okay, so I'm just gonna like skip over them getting their keys because what really is there to talk about regarding that? Like you got your key, yay, let's play the game. So <laughs> fast forward to them on stage with Julie. They're on stage with Julie and now it's time to go into the house. The very first person that enters the house is Michelle and then they go in in groups of four. So she goes in and then everybody else just kind of like trickles in after her. So they get in there and they're looking around and they're introducing themselves to each other and then suddenly they start to realize it's only 12 of them and they're like hold on like there's usually 16 four people are missing what's going on and so now everybody's antennas are going up so then julie comes up and she lets them know like there are four more house guests and that's the first twist of the season they are hidden somewhere in the house we're stowaways we're somewhere in this house hidden right and so then like clockwork all of a sudden uh, Nicole pops out of the suitcase, James pops out of the suitcase, I pop out of the suitcase, and then Frank pops out of the suitcase. Now, I get this question all the time. People are like, how did you guys fit in that suitcase? Like, did you guys see each other? Like, how did it happen? Ah, 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 ah. So, the suitcase on the outside, like what you guys got to see, that was literally designed in a prop, okay? We weren't in an actual suitcase or a chest. Like, we weren't <laughs> actually in that. It was actually a tunnel that led underneath the, um, underneath the studio. So we had to crawl in this tunnel one at a time. So I didn't see Nicole, I didn't see James, I didn't see Frank, and they none of them saw me. So we didn't know that they were going to be there. So seeing each other was really a shock. We weren't in there together. They had us come in separately right so i'm crawling through this damn tunnel it's pitch black i can't see anything i can't even see the end of the tunnel i just had to feel for the ending so i didn't like crack my face on nothing i had to feel for the ending and then i had to wait for one of the producers to tell me okay now you can pop up so then when the producer told me okay i can pop up that's when i popped out of the box right so that's how that was like we weren't really in suitcases it was like an underground tunnel that we had to crawl through and then hold this position until the producer gave us the okay to pop out and say surprise and so that's how that worked out. <laughs> so we're all here, all 16 are in the house and we're getting to know each other. I'm excited to see Nicole cause I loved her during her season. I see James and even though he snaked me on season 17, I was like, look, it's only four of us in here. So you gotta have my back this season. Like, right? Like you gotta have my back this season, right? Right? So, <laughs> you know, that's my, my, my goal is that he gonna look out for me this season, right, James? Like, you gonna look out for me this season, right? And so then I see Frank, and I get super excited because I was a super fan of Frank's during his season. Like, I wanted him to win so bad. I was, like, the biggest fan of Frank's during his season. So I was super excited to see him. Like, the, the fan of the show in me was, like, geeked to see him. You know what I mean? So... Everybody is getting to know each other and everybody's introducing themselves. And as we're sitting around the um, on the couches, I get to really, really look at Tiffany, like really look at her. And that's when I really start seeing Vanessa like 
you can't hide that. Like, you cannot hide that. It's almost as if she was like, hey, sis, I got cast on the show. Let me borrow your face for the summer. I'll give it back when it's over. Like, it, you you can't hide it. They look just alike, okay? So then um, Polly reveals that he's Cody's brother. And so when he does that, like, I start putting all types of antennas. I'm like, hold up. Like, we got Tiffany and we got you and y'all siblings. And I'm like, okay. So then who else in here is related to somebody? Then I start looking at Jose. Honey, you could not tell me that Jose and Devin from season 16 were not related, okay? I was convinced that they attend the same family reunions and eat the same barbecue. I was convinced they look just like they favor each other to me. And so I'm like, okay, boom, check you. So then I started looking for other people and I look over at Michelle and she looks just like Nicole to me. And I'm like, oh, they done bought in Nicole's family member? I got family that want to play this game. Ain't nobody call and ask, did my family want to come in here? But I'm looking at Michelle and then Michelle says that she's from the same place or the same area that um, Nicole is from. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. So it's all kind of like adding up in my mind. And then I look at Bronte. Now hear me out. <laughs> hear me out what I'm about to say might sound a little crazy but hear me out if you really look at Bronte in the face and then listen to her voice and put some blonde hair on her like in your imagination like close your eyes and create the visual okay I thought Bronte was related to Tori Spelling that's what I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, that's Tori Spelling's relative. And so I'm like, oh, it's celebrities got relatives in here too. And then Zakia looked like Angela Bassett to me. And I'm like, oh, like it's, hold up. So <laughs> these things were running through my mind. So wrong, didn't care. In the moment, it made sense to me. Realizing okay. that we are outnumbered. It's only four of us and it's 12 of them, okay? And they've already made a pact to stick together and have each other's backs and to vote us out. So we realize that we need to stick together. By we, I mean the vets. We realize we need to stick together, okay? We need to have each other's backs and we just need to band together because they are coming for us. Definitely, 1,000% they are coming for us. So we need to stick together, right? That was the plan. Julie <laughs> and production throw us a curveball. Like production obviously wanted us to work this season because they threw the curveball, which was the next twist of the season, to let us know we will be playing this game in teams. And those teams would require the vets to separate. Like production said, ain't no sticking together. Not this season. Y'all about to separate. Okay. So <laughs> We were being split up into four different teams. And so I kind of sucked. Like it sucked a lot because now it's like, okay, which two vets are going to stick together? Which three vets are going to stick together again? You know what I'm saying? It was just like, it kind of like put us like, uh, it was whack. Like it was so whack. So in any event, I was like, okay, if we're doing that, then in my mind, I was like, I need to try to convince these um, newbies that I'm still, I'm, I'm still a newbie myself. So basically my strategy was to tell them, listen, I only lasted two weeks. I don't really know this game like that. Like Frank has played and he got so far. Nicole got far. James got far. I literally made it two weeks. I don't like, I'm literally still <laughs> new to this game myself. Like I'm one of y'all. That was my angle. Like I'm one of y'all, right? So find that out. And then now it's time for us to pick teams because the first competition is starting right now. Somebody is going home before the end of this two-night premiere, okay? So the first eviction is happening very fast. So get with it or you're going to get lost, okay? <laughs> so that knowledge kind of lit a fire up under everybody. It lit a fire up under me for sure, okay? I definitely, nobody wants to be the first person evicted. And in my case, I didn't want to be the first or second. I wasn't trying to repeat history. I was trying to create new memories this season, okay? So I didn't want to be the first or the second out the door, okay? Not the third or the fourth. Like, I wanted some time up in this thing, right? So <laughs> it's time for us to pick our teams. Everybody start picking. I 
my pick, Paul. I called him Paul Lee. Like, that was so embarrassing, y'all. That was so embarrassing. Me saying so confident, Paul Lee. Like, <laughs> I was so confident and just talking to the wrong person. Hindsight 2020, I probably should have picked Paul Lee. Paul Lee turned out to be a major monster in this game, like a beast in these competitions. So he would have been great to have on my team. Hindsight 2020. But anyway, I ended up picking Paul, and then as my team started to pick, Paul picked Zakia, and then Zakia picked Jose. So that was my team, Team Big Sister. That's who we had. So once all of the teams are picked, the very first competition of the season begins. Now, I was cool being on this rocket. I was cool with it swinging back and forth and tilting. and t I was cool. But then they started spraying that water. And let me tell you something about Big Brother. Big Brother does not spray you with lukewarm water. They don't spray you with room temperature water. No, they spray you with freezing ice igloo fresh out of the damn uh, 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 Antarctica damn cold water like it's freezing water but i'm like you know what davon and it's all in my face i do not like water i i don't like it so <laughs> they're spraying and i'm right in the front of the rocket and the little the little hose is right here so it's just and i'm mad because i'm like damn somebody else could have sat up here and been getting all this action i don't want it i didn't ask for it but i'm staying the course so Paul comes up with a strategy for us to follow the rocket. So whichever way the rocket tilts, we tilt too. So if the rocket is going this way, then we lean our body this way. If the rocket goes this way, we lean our, our body this way. And that works perfect until the water is involved. So now we have water involved and now it's slippery. So us shifting isn't really beneficial because now we can slip right off. So I'm thinking maybe we should come up with another strategy. You know what I'm saying? And then I think it was either uh, Paul or Jose. Somebody said, everybody lock legs with the person behind you. And I'm like, what the hell? They like lock legs with the person behind you. So meaning I would lock legs with Zakia and then um, Paul would lock legs with Jose and then we would hold on to the rocket. So that explains why me and Zakia fell at the same time because we were literally attached to each other. So that's how that worked out. Anyway, all the team big sister hits the ground, not at the same time, but we all fall. And so we end up becoming have not. This was the beginning of my have not journey. Okay. So <laughs> the team that wins ultimately ends up being, um, the unicorn, the team unicorn, uh, James, Natalie, who was on that team? Bronte? Michelle. Somebody was over there. No, it was Bronte. It was, um, James, Bronte, Michelle, and, um, Victor. So they end up winning and they're safe for two evictions. So the other teams, which is Frank's team and uh, what's her name? Nicole's team. Those are the teams that we have to compete in the compete against in the next round. Right. So it's time for us to go into the next round. And this is where we have to build the little puzzle while holding the ropes. Now, this was difficult because this involved a lot of communication and a lot of trust with your team. And we hadn't established that yet. In fact, my team was working against me. Like all three of them were like really working against me out more to get me out more so than any other team. Like, you know, just watching the episode, I didn't see, you know, the other teams saying, you know, oh, we got to get Frank out or we're going to have to get Nicole out or we're going to have to get James out. But I would always see the conversations with Paul and Zakia and Jose and they're like, we got to get her out, like, so on and so, especially Paul, like, Paul's DR sessions were like, Devon's got to go, I got to get Devon out, and I'm like, bro, I don't even know you yet, like, why, <laughs> why are you so mad this early, like, it's too early for you to have this much of a vendetta against me, I, what did I do, like, what did I do, so it was very hard for us to communicate, because Paul is a very dominating person. He likes to take charge. And that's kind of how I am. As a matter of fact, that's exactly how I am. I like to take charge. I don't like group projects. That's why I was so upset when Julie let us know that we were going to be in teams. Like, I was visibly livid because I've never liked it. From elementary school up until college and even now. I don't like group projects. I don't like my success being contingent upon how effective 
or how much a person completes their part of the task. Like, I don't like that. I'd sooner just do it myself and get my grade on my own. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't like relying on people because people are unreliable. You get what I'm saying? So I wasn't happy about that at all, but I had to put that to the side because we needed to win. I wasn't trying to go home. And so I needed to really, really work with my teammates. And so we were doing okay as far as communication. Paul was really trying to take the lead and it was just kind of hard to work with that, but I had to push through. In any event, Frank's team ended up winning that one. Bridget, you know, hit the buzzer and they won that one. So now it was down to my team and Nicole's team going into this final part of the um, the competition. And this would determine which team was going to have to do that final one. And then ultimately somebody from that team was going home. You know what I'm saying? So, so after this competition was completed, we all had to go and get locked inside of the house so that they can break down the backyard and kind of prepare for the sandcastle portion of the competition, the next part. But while they were building that, we had to go inside the house. So while we were in there, you know, you see us having the conversation. It's time for Team Big Sister to have a group meeting. Now, what you did not see is while we were back there having the conversation, I'm talking to them about, you know, we need to stick together and we just need to win this thing and be on one accord, work on our communication and just really pull out this win because we don't want to be in the bottom. That's the speech I'm delivering. Jose then turns around and says, but if we don't win, like if we don't win and we end up in that final challenge, then we need to stick to the plan. Okay. And when he says that he points at Zakia and points at Paul, he goes, we need to stick to the, um, we need to stick to the plan. Okay. And he did that right in front of my face. So the fact that he was bold enough to do that in front of my face, PS, the original plan was vote out the vet. Okay. So to do that in front of my face, I was just kind of like, Hmm. Okay. I got you. Not a problem. So then, you know, that's what really made me say, okay, Devon, you got to work hard because <laughs> your team is against you. Like the people you selected are against you. So you need to put in some work. You need to put in some work because otherwise it's you like you're out of here. Okay. So now it's time for us to go into the backyard and get ready for this next part so we get the into the backyard and now it's time for us to begin the sandcastle competition and you know what surprisingly we're doing okay you get what i'm saying our communication is cool like we're doing okay the whole purpose well the goal for this uh competition is your team has to build the sandcastle the fastest and then all of your team members have to jump into this square and stand there that's how your team wins uh, all of your people have to be inside of that square with the sandcastle built that's how you win right so we're communicating great like everything is going good and then um I think um Nicole's team started getting ahead of us and this kind of like made Paul feel a certain kind of way because now he's like oh my gosh you know which is understandable his game is on the line so now he starts you know doing that I'm the coach I'm the leader you know stuff and I'm just like you know what not today Satan we're not doing that so I start taking control of my team like hey this is what we're going to do, okay? And so as this happens, I guess he didn't like that because he said something like, Devon decides she wants to get spicy with me. I sure did. Tapatio spicy. And what? And so I start telling him, get it together because we're not going to lose today, okay? So we start building, and then suddenly we see Nicole's team all jump in their box. And so we're like, oh, my gosh. We start panicking, but while we're panicking, we're still building. Like, we never stop building. We're still building, and it turns out that that sound cancel was wrong. So then we go, and we get it built to the top, and then we all jump inside of our square. Turns out our sand castle was wrong. So now we neck and neck. And so we go, we see it instantly. I think it was Paul, actually. Paul saw it instantly that one of the pieces were incorrect. So we go in, we start taking stuff down, we shift, we start building back up, we jump into the square, and then we win. Like, we won. And I was crying the ugly tears. Like, the uh, as a viewer... <laughs> <laughs> as a viewer taking myself out of the equation and just being a viewer I was a wreck like how are you a wreck and this is the first episode and I'm already a like ugly tears like snot tears like ugly tears how like you've only been here a couple hours sis how you gonna get through this season like you already doing all of this 
I don't know how y'all did it. Like, Slave Eye Nation, I don't know how y'all did it because I'm already stressed and it's only one episode. Like, I'm stressed, okay? <laughs> so then um, we win and everybody's celebrating. And then it goes to Paul's DR and he goes, yay, I'm excited. You know, safety is great. Give me cake to put in my stomach, but I'm still coming for you, Davon. I'm going to get you out because I don't trust you in this game. progress I'll know why he has this strong urgency to want to get me out and I understand that they wanted to get the vets out of the game like I get that but I'm a vet that's on your team and I'm also a vet that's now safe so how come your DR isn't well Nicole is the vet that's up for grabs you know what I'm saying she's not safe so we need to make sure we get her out if we're going to stick to the plan and get all the vets out why is your DR about me the person that's on your team that really is not making sense to me and I'm trying not to take it personal this is why I didn't want to watch it but I'm trying so hard not to take it personal because it's like bro I was safe so why are you still trying to get me I was safe I was with you so if the goal wasn't me personally and it was just to take out the vets there was only one vet that was up for grabs. And why did that person's name not come out of your mouth? Why was it still about Devon, the person on your team? So I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. This is going to be a journey and I'm going to have to pray and talk to God to, you know, keep my feelings in check and keep my emotions in check so that they don't come out because... I don't know what the problem is. Like, I, I I I don't get it. But it is what it is. That's pretty much how that first episode ended. Um, I'm excited to watch the second episode and see what happens next and come to you guys with a review about that. I really want to do it to where we'll do these videos to where you guys can watch me watching the episodes so you can see my natural reactions. Because right now, I'm just kind of like... I'm just talking to you guys after the fact. Like, I want you guys to see me actually watching it. So if somebody knows how I can get that in here, like, <laughs> comment below and help a sister out because I don't know what to do. Like, I'm still learning this whole YouTube thing, thing, thing. So if anybody knows how to do that, like, comment below and let me know so you guys can see my actual reactions. Other than that, as a fan of the show and a viewer, I am a super fan of Davon. Like, I love Davon. Like, she is so real. She is all chocolatey. Like, I am here for it, okay? Davon is a beautiful, melanin queen. No, okay. I see a lot of me in Davon, and I think that's why I can relate to her so much. I mean, she's iconic. She is legendary. She is amazing. She is a queen, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That is she. I love her. So, you know, she's my fave, and I'm rooting for her to win the season, so... That's that on that. If you liked this video, make sure you like this video. Thank you for bearing with me through my lisp, okay? You guys know I have my aligners in right now, getting them straight teeth. So <laughs> just bear with me. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Unconditional support, like constant support. You guys are the bomb. If you want more videos like this, then give this video a thumbs up, you guys. Like, I'm going to try to give you guys the content that you want. Give us the content that we deserve. Give us what we deserve. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys what you want. And so, depending on... Depending depending on how many likes this video gets that's what i'm gonna know okay this is the type of stuff that they want to see so let me do more of these type of things but yeah i love you guys so much again if you are not already subscribed to my channel hit that subscribe button i would love to have you a part of this party i'm out i'm done until my next video we're out of here you look a fly